encourage you to go to the website and Elaine is just doing a wonderful job of getting everything up to date and up to snuff and you can go on there and find out everything you need to know. But the uh, main things this, this week that are coming up are the, uh, the Bible studies, uh, building Christian character on Tuesday, uh, men's breakfast, breakfast on Friday, and then also on Friday in Step with the Spirit, it's a woman's Bible study. And our cultural awareness uh, thing uh, this week on Thursday is Dr. Erlinda from Barra, and we're really looking forward to that because she's going to fill us in on a lot of these problems that are going on down here at Dengue and some of the medical issues and, and try to help us get a little instruction on where we might be able to go and what we might be able to do. So, and uh, anything else? I think I'll just, well maybe I should ask, is there anyone here that hasn't been here before that's not embarrassed to stand up and introduce themselves? Good morning, I'm Sandra Smith, I'm from Port Alberta, British Columbia. Yeah, I'm Sandra. Good morning, I'm from Lewis Street, just by Barrier, BC. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I think then we'll uh, just get started. We'll start the worship. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Good morning. I think, there we go. I'm on a little bit loud. Um, our gathering song, we will be starting, uh, having you look in your bulletin. We're going to start with the chorus of How Great Is Our God. We will, uh, um, the Five of us will sing the first verse, and then um, we'll ask you to join it with us in the chorus. And then please have your book open to hymnal uh, number 10, How Great Thou Art. Okay, so your bulletin to start, and then go to page 10 of the hymnal. And when you're ready, please rise. If you know the first verse, feel free to sing with us. Oh, 
chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Our next song this morning is in your booklet, Here I Am to Worship, it's number 40. And then after we sing Here I Am to Worship, we'll sing 10,000 Reasons, and that is number 83. Those numbers are listed in your bulletin. And stay standing as you may, and if you're uncomfortable, feel free to sit down. Worship is holy name. Sing like that. 
talking about uh, love and forgiveness and uh, it's something that each and every one of us needs to look at and talk about and uh, it's a process in our Christian life that keeps us healthy, keeps us alive 
And uh, like it says here at the end of this passage that was read before, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, as members of one body, uh, you were called to peace. And you think about that and you think, I don't know if all these people are going to get along or not. You know. But we're called to peace. We're called to love one another, to forgive one another. And uh, so that's our community prayer today. That we could just uh, even look around and we could just be thankful for one another. We could be thankful that this body is united because we do love and care and forgive one another. So let us pray together. Heavenly Father, you're, uh, you amaze me sometimes, God, in how patient you are with us. Uh, you probably have uh, been more patient with our uh, problems and grievances and sin and whatever you want to call it than we ever are to one another. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that because that Jesus has taught us a lesson of loving one another and forgiving one another. Like he said, as I have forgiven you. So Father, as we pray together as a church, we would pray that you would continue to unite us in love. And to unite us in love, that means to to help to cleanse this body and keep it healthy. And Father, if we do have a grievance or we're bothered by someone, help us to speak that out and to clear that up and to cleanse the church. Lord, I also pray, uh, there's so many people that are traveling, I pray for their traveling mercies. I pray for this uh, coronavirus that is uh, traveling around the world. And Lord, that, um, that number one, you would just help the physicians and the doctors to get a handle on it so that it can be stopped, so that it can be controlled, so that people uh, that where their lives have been disrupted can get back to normal. And we pray for that as a church. And Lord God, we also pray for this, this body right here, this church. Uh, I pray for anyone that's uh, not feeling well, anyone that's sick, anyone that's uh, hurting, anyone that grieves, anyone that suffers any kind of pain. Lord, that they would leave here today feeling your peace upon them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I thought we'd say the Lord's Prayer together. Now, the reason I think it's nice to say it together is because it was the Lord's reminder to us that on a daily basis, we need to not only... It's interesting how it goes, you know, forgive us our sins. We're not perfect. And Lord, forgive those who have sinned against us. And that, that's part of it. That's part of keeping this body whole. So let's pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into the world, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. We're going to be looking at this passage in uh, Colossians, and I marked it out here for Juan. We're going to be reading this here. It's an estimate. <coughs> and, uh, it, it's, a, it's a great passage. I, every once in a while I just think to, uh, let's go with me first. Every once in a while I need to be cleansed. 
every once in a while I need to feel a little holier. Uh, and sometimes the reason is that I need cleansing is there are things that happen in my life that I'm not happy about or I might uh, not like, but, uh, but sometimes I hang on to them. And I've found that all those little things that I hang on to, uh, they just slow me down after a while. And uh, I get my hands too full and, and I lose my hand towards God. And uh, Lord help me. So as I read this, therefore as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, and holy, you know we've talked about holiness this year, and when you look, we're, we remind us here, Paul says that we are God's chosen people. He reminds us that we are holy, and uh, I want to be standing on holy ground. I want to. I don't like jumping off on the in the sand traps. I like uh, I like being on the holy ground. And I. Uh, he also says that we're dearly loved. Jesus reminded us of that. You know, love one another as I have loved you. We're dearly loved by God the Father. We're dearly loved by the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to read this just about God's love from the Old Testament in Jeremiah. Jeremiah uh, 31, verse 31. It's easy to remember if you want to look it up later. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judea. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and I brought them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant. And he says, even though they broke that covenant, this is what he says, though I loved them, even though they, they couldn't do anything right, they just didn't get it, they continued in their sinful ways. God says, though I still loved them. As a husband would love his wife, says the Lord. But he said, this is going to be the new covenant that I will make with the people of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my instructions deep within them. And when I read that, you know, I think about when the Holy Spirit, you know, when we receive Christ, when we start to understand who God is all about and how much He loved us and how He gave Jesus Christ for us, how He was crucified on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven. As I think about all that, I realize that in this new covenant, that he will write his love on our hearts. He says, I will be their God, and they will be my people, and they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, you should know the Lord. For everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already, says the Lord, and I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. Never again remember. My sister, she was a, a Episcopalian uh, deaconess and, and pastor in, in New Mexico for a number of years. She pastored a, uh, she was chaplain of the big uh, Mexico, New Mexico, uh, state penitentiary for women and she served there for many years and I remember she told me a story one time and it always is kind of this never left me and she said that uh, and it was a true story and it was about a, a young woman uh, she was a nun that uh, worked a little parish in a in a First Nations uh, village in New Mexico. 
And the village was just really responding to her reading the scriptures and challenging them into leading better lives. And, and, it was, and people were getting healed and people were giving up drugs. And it was wonderful. And so her bishop called her and he said, I hear there's a great thing going on in your parish. And she said, yes, sir. She said, it's wonderful. She said, I can't explain it. She said, the people are just falling in love with Jesus. And uh, he said to her, Jesus, really? Like he's kind of personal to them? Oh, yes, sir. She said, they, they just love him. They worship him. And, and things are beginning to happen. And we're so thankful for Jesus and what he's doing in our midst. He says, really? He said, well, I'd like you to check in with me in a couple of weeks and tell me how things are going. And so she came back in a couple of weeks. He said, how are things going? I said, oh, it, it, I can't. She said, the, the, the parish is full. People are standing outside. She said, they're, they're asking God to forgive their sins. They're just, they just are so excited about Jesus. He said, tell me something about Jesus. She said, do you know him personally? And she said, oh, yes. Yes, sir, I, I know him so well. He's, he is so good to all of us. She said, well, if you know him personally, do you talk to him? Well, yes, sir. He said, well, if you talk to him, then does he answer you? She said, oh, yes, but well, look at the parish. Look at, I've prayed for this parish, and we pray, and... And he's answering our prayers. I said, really? I said, do you believe that? She said, oh, yes, sir, I do. I believe that. He said, well, I've got a, a little quiz for you. I'd like to see you in another two weeks and see how things are going. But I'd like you to ask Jesus, if you know Jesus so well, ask him the next time you see him what my last sin was. And she thought, Yes, sir, I, I will ask him. And she came back two weeks later, and he said, how are things going? She said, oh, praise God, they're, they're, Jesus is alive. And he said, uh, did you ask Jesus the question I asked about my last sin? She said, yes, sir, I did. And what did he say? He said he forgot. <laughs> now that's a church that forgives. Because forgiving is forgetting. Forgiving is, is forgetting. Amen. Since God shows you to be holy, this is where I'm reading from this passage, uh, Jose. One. You must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. And you must make an allowance for one another's faults. I like how it's, that's worded. It doesn't say right away that you have to forgive them, but be a little more tolerant of them. You, how did this church ever happen? If, if this church was not based on a foundation of love and forgiveness from the very beginning, it, it would have crashed. It could never survive. This many people getting together with this many ideas and this many thoughts and however many grievances we have against one another, if there wasn't something as love and forgiveness, it would not have survived. It could not survive. It would have died 2,000 years ago. And when we think about, about forgiveness, I, I get a skip with my wife in, in the church when in its early years we were still in ATCO trailers and we were just about ready to outgrow that and move into a, a big log building, but I it was always 
wonderful. It was always full and always a lot of things were happening and I, I was going to do a, a skit on forgiveness and because I was going to talk about forgiveness. And so what I did, now it seems like this would have given it away that it, it was a skit, is I walked up before my message with a garbage can and I put the garbage can in, in front of the podium like that. Now, wouldn't you think like, I don't know. But so I put it there and I said, this is what forgiveness is like. Forgiveness is like if you have a, uh, it, it, once you're forgiven by Christ, you know, if you write that down and say, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. Lord, forgive me for my attitude. And you take it up to Christ. And it's like I said, you know, it's forgotten. He doesn't remember. It's wadded up and it goes in the garbage. It is no more. And so anyway, I was going to do this kit. And it was all prearranged. My wife was going to help me. So I'm into this message a little bit. And she comes walking up the aisle. And she says, uh, with a piece of paper written out, uh, honey, you're going to have to forgive me the way I treated you the other day. You were working hard, and, and I just rolled all over you, and I gave a whole bunch of stuff to you that I shouldn't have given to you. Forgive me. And I said, of course I forgive you. And she handed me the paper, and I wadded it up, and I threw it in the can. Now, wouldn't you think this is a skit? Well, so anyway, about five minutes later, here she comes walking up the aisle. This is all pre rage Walking up the aisle, and she says, I can't let it go. And I said, what do you mean you can't let it go? She said, it just still bothers me. I said, it, it, it's in the trash. It's gone. It's forgotten. I love you. I've forgiven you. You've let it go? I said, yep, I've let it go. And so she hands me a piece of paper and I wanted it up. So anyway, she comes up the third time and one of the elders said, Sue, sit down. <laughs> and I, I thought, oh, we're, this is just a skit. Like, <laughs> and so Sue did. She sat down. And I thought, like, they don't get it. They don't get that this is a skit. And then a lady stood up, just absolutely in tears, and she said, I need to confess I am the worst wife and mother in the world. And she just was crying and crying. And she said, I, I just have to go to God and ask him to forgive me. I'm just, I'm just terrible at being a mother and terrible at being a wife. And then somebody else jumped up and says, you know, I, I haven't really liked my neighbor for years, and I, I just hope that I can talk to him this week. And I thought, oh, where does this all come from? And it just turned into a little confessional. And I, I just kind of sat back and just breathed it in and said, thank you, Lord, like your Holy Spirit can do things and ways that I will never, ever understand. That we would make allowances for one another's faults. Oh, and then when we were leaving, we were going to go to a conference after that, and we're walking out the door, and one of the guys that attended there, he came up to me and says, I hope, I sure hope you get your stuff in order before you get back. <laughs> I'll work on it. <laughs> Remember the Lord forgave you. So you must. Remember the Lord forgave you. And then he says, so you must. So you must forgive others. You must forgive others, and above all, when we talked about this, what comes first? 
Does love come first or forgiveness come first? And I, I honestly believe love comes first. God is love. And above all, clothe yourselves with this love which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts as members of one body that you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. And I look at that and I, I, I am so thankful that we are taught to love and forgive one another. When I began in the ministry back in the 80s, uh, and I was called to be a pastor by our little group. They said, you just do it till we can find a real pastor. And uh, I thought that was a good idea. And uh, needless to say, I was there for like 25, 30 years. And, and they found a pastor because I said, I need to step down. And I remember going into ministry and I remember I was always praying, Lord, you know, just show me if there's anything in me that uh, shouldn't be there so that I can minister to people, anyone. So I can minister either to those that you love or I can minister to those that I don't love. <laughs> and oh, I never should have prayed that prayer. <laughs> And he showed me three, four, five different areas that I needed to look at. And one of them was with a guy that I had worked for at a fencing business. And he sent my workers home one day. And I had a contract and they had no right to do it. And he was just managing the range that I was building fence on. And, and I called him up on the phone and I said, don't you ever do that again. I was furious. I was spitting, I was so mad at don't you ever send my men home like that again unless you want to pay for their day. Don't you ever do that. I was just, oh, 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 just furious. I was so mad I couldn't even finish the conversation, I just slammed the phone down. And the Lord reminded me, uh, that's one of the guys you need to call up and say you're sorry to. I thought, oh, boy, why are you doing this? But I never forget, I called him up and before I started in the ministry and I said, uh, I am so sorry for that phone call. I said, I, I am so sorry. I never should have done that. I never should have treated you that way. There were, there were about two or three different instances like that that he brought to my mind where I needed to... One of them was a stupid little CB radio, a little two-way radio that a guy had left it there. He was a log loader operator and he was doing some logging on our property. And I, I mean, he left, he abandoned his, his vehicle there and I... So, but it had this nice radio, so I took it out and put it in my tractor. That's okay. Finders keepers. And that bothered me. Like, I got, like God, why are you bugging me with stuff like this? I'll, I'll put it back in his loader. And no, that wasn't the case. I saw the guy on the street in Fort St. John, and I came up and I said, you need to forgive me. He said, what for? I said, I didn't steal it, but I... I've been using your radio. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I said, no, it's not okay. I said, I'm sorry. I should have asked you first. Why, why did God remind you of such little things? I'll tell you why God reminds us of these little things. It's because all these little things build up and we can't get on to what to do for God for good. Because we've got too many of them. And we need to get them all cleared up. 
And I kept thinking, oh, my word. You know, often we think, you know, like, there's a lot of people that we just don't like, that we just don't get along with, and, and we might have forgiven them, but we really haven't. And it's interesting, Peter came up to Jesus, and he said this in Matthew 18, verse 21. He said, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? And of course, Jesus said, uh, seven times? Or Peter said that, seven times? He said, Jesus said, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. They can just keep kicking me, and I just got to keep forgiving them? Yep, that's right. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, he said this, can be compared to a king who decided to bring, and he, 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 he revealed this parable to us, and it's a wonderful parable. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with his servants, who had borrowed money from him. And in the process, one of his debtors uh, brought, was brought in who owed him millions of dollars, and he couldn't pay. So his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife and children and everything else that he owned to pay his debt. But the man fell down before his master and he begged him, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him and he released him and he forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, now this is a, a picture of God forgiving the church. It really is. But when, it says, when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him $5,000, and he grabbed him by the throat, and he demanded an instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me, and I'll pay it all back, he pleaded. But this man wouldn't wait. And he had the man arrested and put into prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were pretty upset. And they went to the king and they told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man that he had forgiven and he said, you evil servant. You evil servant. I forgave you that tremendous debt. I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow man? Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow man? Just as I had mercy on you. Then the angry king sent the man to prison to work off the debt he owed. And I believe the debt that he owed, it wasn't for the money he owed. The debt that he owed was a sin that he brought against his fellow man. Interesting. But I'll tell you, love and forgiveness is a cleansing thing. And it's a wonderful thing. It's the beginning of, of life in us anew. I'm going to close here. And uh, I just remember, uh, funny how, I guess a lot of hospital visits and People, when they're dying, they often want to get their accounts kind of settled up. I don't know why we wait that long sometimes. But, but one time I went to visit a, a dear man in a church, and he told me that he was a, 
I used to be a pastor and used to be a, an elder in a church. And, and he said, uh, before I die, he said, I need to confess my sins. And I said, have you confessed them to, to God, to Jesus? He said, oh yeah. But I just want to tell somebody else. And I, uh, I really didn't want to be there. You know, it's one of those things where, but I listened and he began to tell me a few things that he had done when he was young. And he was, he was telling me these things that he had done. And he was such a godly Christian man that I was thinking to myself, oh, if you knew who I was when I was little. <laughs> But uh, I, I remember just putting my hand on his head and just reminding him that Jesus had forgiven him. And that was all he needed. Amen? Amen. We have a closing song, I think. I was going to say something else. <laughs> I don't want to let you off the hook. I really don't. I, I, uh, I'd like, before we sing the last song, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd like a sister silently pray as a church. And I'd like us to ask ourselves, uh, Lord, if there is something in me that needs to be cleared up and cleansed up, reveal that to me today. Reveal that to me. Reveal that truth to me so that I can, I can be cleansed. Let us just pray together before we sing this last song. you are an amazing God. You have forgiven us our sins. Lord God, help us to forgive others that have sinned against us. I pray in Jesus' name. Along with the theme that we've been hearing today, our closing song is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. It's in your booklet, number 69. Number 69, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Please rise.
Ken and Shauna. Okay, uh, Ken or Shauna will be there to uh, pray with anyone if they need prayer, personal prayer, any kind of a need. Uh, they're there to pray with you. So Lord, as we uh, move into this new week, we're so thankful that we can come here and worship you. A God who loves us and a God who forgives us, a God who cleanses us, a God who causes us to create a peaceful place in our world. May the Lord bless all of you and keep all of you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, all of you. And may the Lord be gracious to you. But most of all, may the Lord turn his face towards you and grant you his good and his everlasting peace. God bless you all. Have a great week.